Now I'd like to open the meeting to the sharing of testimonies of healing through Christian science. Wendy. Wendy from Georgia, go ahead. First of all, thank you, Florence, for the inspirational readings this evening. Um, recently, my mom's dog, Dixie, who she loved dearly, passed on after having oral surgery. Uh, while we weren't humanly ready for her to go on, my practitioner told me that things don't always turn out as we wish. However, there's always a blessing and wonderful lessons to be learned when we apply our science. My practitioner was absolutely right. My mom had not too long ago expressed an interest in downsizing her living space from her large four-bedroom, two-story home. It was really more room than she felt she needed living by herself. So we had explored the possibility of her moving to an apartment, which was located near my home. But moving there with her dog, we found out, would not have been possible. With Dixie's recent passing and with all the memories of her loving pet in her home, the thought came to me to revisit the possibility of her moving, and she was receptive to the idea. I called the apartment office, and they said a unit had just become available. So we went over there immediately to check it out. My mom felt it was where she needed to be, so we were able to get her moved in right away on Memorial Day. The movers arrived loaded her furniture into the truck, drove it to the new apartment, unloaded it into each room, and it all fit in the new space perfectly and beautifully. Everything was in its right place instantly. <clears throat> the entire move took only an hour and 15 minutes from the time the mover showed up at her house until the time they finished moving her into her new apartment. The unfoldment of God's plan for her was swift, and it was an unfoldment with no barriers or limitations. I'm deeply grateful for this clear demonstration of God's blessing and for his perfect plan unfolding for my mom. Thank you. Thank you. Pilar from New York, go ahead. Okay, good evening. Um, <clears throat> I have been working for a while with my practitioner um, about seeing men, all men, as, as the children of God, and not to feel anger or annoyance when coming into contact with anyone during the course of my daily activities and at work. One day recently, I was walking home from work and found myself in a crowd of people that were waiting for the presidential motorcade to pass by. So I waited, and then afterwards, I proceeded to walk to my regular bus stop and got on board and made myself comfortable for a long ride home. Um, at the next stop, two individuals got on. One of them was loud and perhaps seemed to be under the influence of some substance. Um, he also smelled badly. I was hoping against hope that he would not sit anywhere near me, but as it happens, he sat right in front of me. My first reaction was annoyance, followed by questions about he'd look at my luck and hear he white having the whole bus to sit on. He has to sit right here in front of me. But remembering my practitioner's uh, guidance on this particular subject that I've been working with her, I reasoned, well, I might as well try and see if the situation can be turned around right here and right now. So I decided to see this person in front of me as the true child of God, innocent and pure. It was a big struggle, and many, many times I thought perhaps I should go and change my seat, but then I thought, well, this, this is going to send a message that I don't want to sit next to him and that I found his presence offensive. So I persevere, and uh, in order not to focus on him and his surrounding, I started looking at my iPhone, thank God for that, but kept doing the work mentally to see God's child right where he was. After a while, all of a sudden, the offensive smell disappeared, and this individual was very quiet and composed. I started coughing at some point, and he very politely turned around and asked me if I was okay. I thanked him and said I was fine, and then I saw him get up and go to the bus driver to ask him if he would lower the air conditioner. 
as he thought that that was causing me to cough. I felt very moved by his kindness and compassion and felt love towards this individual that not too long ago uh, I was dreading and judging. He finally got off the bus on 42nd Street, and I continue on my trip uptown in peace and with much gratitude to God for his help to see his child where the sinning mortal man appeared to be. I am very grateful for Christian science and the teachings of my practitioners. Thank you very much, and thank you for the wonderful reading. Thank you. Jeremy. I am so grateful for all that Christian science is bringing to my life and how being a member of this church is helping, to me, helping me to understand and be grateful for all that God imparts. Learning that God is the only source of supply has been quite a revelation to me. I'm really trying to see each day all that comes my way as coming directly from Him. And I can feel how this line of thought is dissolving my fears of lack and any worries about the future I've had. For quite a while, almost since I arrived in Plainfield, I have been thinking and praying about how I could pay back the church and the members for everything they have done for me. This thought stayed with me for a while, and then not long ago, a most shocking thought came. Since God is the source of all supply, I'm asking God to supply me with the means to pay him back for what he supplied. And as I thought that, I I actually laughed out loud. It was such foolishness. So then I prayed, What can I do? How can I make good on this massive debt I feel for God, Christian Science, this church, and everyone here? The answer I've gotten so far is that I just need to get up in the morning and do the work I'm given to do. So tonight I'm so grateful that God has given me the ability and a place in this church to be useful to him. I'm grateful for daily practitioner support, keeping my thought right, and for everything this church offers and stands for It gives me what I need to strive for obedience and usefulness as I work to be faithful over the few things God gives me. Thank you. Thank you. Shardell from Pennsylvania, go ahead. Hello. Tonight, I would like to express my gratitude for our practitioners and also for all the resources and teachings that are provided by the Plainfield Church and for the magnificent readings tonight. I would like to share an experience concerning my almost five-year-old grandson who recently received dental care that required sedation. I had been praying to understand God's government over all his beloved children. The pedodontist exclaimed that she had never witnessed a child his age who remained so calm and happy during this type of a procedure. I had also been praying with the prayers given by a practitioner as well as the prayer called In the Presence of God by Mary Baker Eddy that appears on the first page of the May edition of our magazine Love is the Liberator. It starts out, Children, you are a perfect thought of God. Knowing and having faith in God's constant and complete care for all mankind is a treasure beyond anything that I had ever realized before coming to Plainfield. Thank you, God, and thank you to all who made this service possible tonight. Thank you. Linda Linda from Pennsylvania, go ahead. Good evening. Thank you, Florence, for the inspiring readings, and thank you for the beautiful music tonight and the wonderful testimonies. Tonight I would like to share gratitude for a recent healing. One Wednesday afternoon at work, I deeply cut the tip of a finger. I covered it with a bandage. At first I was shocked, and that followed by self-condemnation for being so careless. I stopped this line of thinking and turned it to focus on remembering of a a previous testifier whose hand was healed quickly after a nail gun accident. She stood firm in her trust in God's care and decided and took a stand not to let it disturb her thought so she could participate in that Wednesday service evening that she had injured it. 
I put my faith in what I was hearing and uh, took the, saw this as an opportunity to prove that God was a very present help in trouble. The pain and bleeding stopped very quickly, and by the next day the wound closed enough so that a light bandage was sufficient. It never disrupted my ability to use my hands, and in less than a week, it was completely closed with no marks. I'm very grateful to have these wonderful meetings and the inspiration that comes from them. Thank you, and have a good evening. Thank you. Benjamin. Thank you. Um, first of all, I want to thank Florence for the wonderful reading tonight. Um, an incident happened to me uh, two days ago um, that reminded me of God's uh, constant love and protection for all his creation. Um, he cares about us and none of us can fall, of, fall out of his loving care. Um, I was coming back from work. It was very late in the night and um, I was on, I believe it was um, something I would call like a semi-highway. Um, I was the lead vehicle. Um, I pretty much was speeding and the road allowed us to do so. And um, the road was very, very dark. There was, there was no very much uh, street light. As I was moving, as the, lead, as the lead vehicle, there were a bunch of others behind me. Something just made me promptly try to slow down my car. I wasn't supposed to, there was no traffic light. But something made me to apply my brake right in the middle of, of the highway as I was driving. Immediately I did that about three feet from my car was a very young, young deer, standing there, confused in the, in the dark, confused of the light flashing to him. Then I stopped my car, and that helped other drivers behind me to, to follow, and everybody stopped, and we watched him walk gently to the to safer place. Then I continued moving. And I think God knew who, who I am. He knew my love for animals. And he knew that I prob probably would not be able to forgive myself if such tragedy had taken place. And uh, as I was going home, I couldn't help but thanking God and singing praises to him. And uh, reminding myself and knowing how much he loved me, how much he loved us all. It doesn't matter what you are or what you call yourself or who you are. Human beings, animals, we are all God-loving creatures. And he cared about us equally and he loved us all equally. I'm so grateful to God, and I'm so grateful that God brought me to this church where I have a, the privilege to understand Him and understand myself and be able to, when I go out there, be able to see things the way He wants me to see them and understand His beautiful creation the way He made them to be. Thank you. Thank you. Lou Ann from New York, go ahead. Thank you. When I committed to building the pottery shop, I only had $15,000 saved in the bank. Then my house needed a new roof, which cost $10,000. Then I was forced to retire from my job because of a spinal injury. I thought for sure I'd never be able to build the shop. I put my faith in God and all I was learning about God and his infinite supply. Through each Bible study and lesson and help from my practitioner, 
I learned to trust, and I learned to develop spiritual sense and to obey. I learned to demonstrate truth and to be grateful for all I've been given. God has met my every need along the way. I was provided with jobs. I sold paintings, which I was very generously paid. With more help from my practitioner, casting out doubt and fear, I grew to be patient, and I grew to stand against anything that would keep me from fulfilling God's purpose. Over the past few years, I have received everything I needed to complete the shop without going to the bank for a loan. The final cost of the building was around $30,000, and I still have my initial $5,000 in the bank. I am so very grateful to God for this and for my practitioner whose continual support and ceaseless prayers, her teaching and patience have enabled me to grow in science and know and understand God. I am grateful for the love that can move mountains. And as was said in the readings tonight, nothing is impossible to God. Thank you. Thank you. Day Day from Georgia. Go ahead. Thank you. I'm thankful to have learned through my study of Christian science that no matter how scary a situation or thought, whether it be about finance, opportunity, world conditions, or any proposed danger, I can always choose not to fear. This can often be a very hard decision to make the more aggressive the suggestion to fear becomes. But by learning to stand firm in my understanding of God's power and ever-present protection, I'm seeing daily demonstrations of how faith overcomes fear. The more I hold to the truth of God's allness and the dominion he's given me, the stronger and more brave I'm becoming. And this has been such a blessing to me while allowing me to bless others through prayerful support. I'm so thankful for this new way of life. And thank you so much for tonight's inspiring reading. Thank you. Fairly. Fairly from Maryland, go ahead. Thank you. I want to express my unending gratitude to Plainfield, where after discovering Christian science in my middle years and attending class instruction, and several years of depression, only here did I learn how truly to practice Christian science, and it has made a tremendous difference in my life. Before I came here, life had never really made sense to me. But the truth has become clearer and clearer to me the longer I have been at Plainfield and my understanding. I want particularly tonight to express my special thanks for Plainfield's introducing me to books on Christian science written by early workers in Mrs. Eddy's time. They have helped immensely in my understanding. I have a Christian science friend here who, looked at, who worked at the Mother Church who was fired from her job as head of ushers because she was caught reading this so-called unauthorized literature. Martha Wilcox is one that has been, that book written by Martha Wilcox is one of those that has been very meaning to me recently and very helpful to me. I've been studying and working on pages 250 to 252, Pray Importunately, Dematerialize Matter, Impersonalize Personality. Very valuable instruction to try to put more in my life. I am very thankful to God, to Mrs. Eddy, to my practitioner here at Plainfield, and all those members who share their experiences, testimonies, and understanding. And I want to thank you for the, for the very beautiful and helpful readings on faith tonight. Thank you. Craig. Thank you. And, and thanks for those wonderful readings on faith. 
and I've seen it here, and I understand it more and more. Your faith is a major element to, to any success and to healing. I uh, love this church, and I've seen such extraordinary things here. Uh, I, I was uh, praying back to mine. I, I was in need of a job, I have a family, and I, <clears throat> and I was getting a, a stipend or unemployment for a while, but I, I needed real work. I'm trained <clears throat> in a in, uh, very needed industry. Well, I got practitioner support, I asked, it was, it was lovely given. And uh, I was, I felt so encouraged. And that helped my faith. And in addition to that, things started working out. A training program I was able to get involved in, a test I had to pass to get in, and I easily passed. I, uh, <clears throat> and then there were invitations to lunch, to, to Bible lessons, to round table, to forum, contribute to forum, and, and opportunity to participate in the service. And I, and I realized that just being so involved at that time, and I should still continually do, to do that, <clears throat> I have to say, get up back to that point. It was so much easier to stay, keep my faith and expectancy that everything was gonna work out. It kept me actually where I was, or where I was lifting others and expecting that good things were gonna come. It reminds me, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. I didn't have the opportunity to doubt that God was going to fulfill his promises because we're so involved in, in, in doing good and receiving it. Well, it went beyond ordinary human help from my church family. It was extraordinary divine help. And it was just, yeah, I was brought to my knees and the tears at times, but God was just taking me, <clears throat> well, one step opening my heart and one step further. And so, uh, his great goodness, not to plan for him. He placed me somewhere and even though the work is hard, it's clear God can do it and he's patient and things get happen. Things happen properly. So I thank God for, for this and it's just been a just a great uh, <clears throat> eye-opening and, and, and blessing. Thank God for Vicar Radio Christian Science. Thank you. Myra. Myra. And where is Myra from? I'm from Youngstown, Ohio. And tonight I, I wanted to testify about what I've been going through concerning this lengthy move that has brought about much spiritual growth. And I've seen what the power and omnipotence of God can bring about from what at one time would have felt impossible. But there are too many things to talk about at this time. This particular week, what appeared to be a mechanical problem with my car was taken care of as only God can. I am so grateful for this and all to my practitioner, Mrs. Eddy, and this church. Thank you so much. Thank you. This is Bruce. I had a blessing today that I'm very grateful for because it just goes to show how God is in control. This morning, I had the chance to take my grandchildren to school. So we left what we thought was in plenty of time to get to the school. And the kids were in the back seat, just as happy as can be. And when we got on the road, the traffic got slower and slower until the point where it was just barely crawling. And I was looking at my watch, thinking like, hmm, are we going to get to school on time? And I also noticed that when we were in a very slow traffic, that the two children, who normally were laughing and making noise and very happy, were very quiet. Well, I'm thinking, if these two kids, in their simple sincerity, have the good sense to simply listen to their Heavenly Father, I should probably do the same. And then I remembered years ago, a practitioner in the church stood up and gave a testimony about a time when he was caught in some very slow and heavy traffic. And instead of getting aggravated, he said, 
I'm going to take this opportunity to thank God that I have this time to spend with him and commune with him. So I took the same attitude. And the message that came to me was like, don't you know that I, God, govern all action? And I govern it in order. And your little trip to school is just one very small piece in a big plan that is all ordered and governed by me. So you just stay in your place and do your part, and I will do mine. And we got to school, parked the car, uh, started walking towards the door, and just then a school bus came in with some other school children. And when the uh, teacher saw the school bus come, she opened up the door to let the kids in. And uh, just at that moment, we got to the door. So this little boy walked right into his classroom without breaking stride and didn't have to wait a minute or anything. Just walked right on in. So we're thanking God for his wonderful care and control over everything. Florence from Georgia, go ahead. Thank you. I would just like to express my gratitude tonight for the spiritual significance of all these Bible stories that really help us to see God's power. Often I've thought about the story about the Israelites in between, not knowing how, whether to go forward or not, but it's always through faith in God and I can't thank God enough that through Mrs. Eddy, he really has given mankind another Moses. Because her own example, through her own example of faith, through all that she suffered, physical illness, marriage problems, all that she suffered does encourage us and help to lead us on. I'm so grateful for all the beautiful testimonies tonight and grateful to be here. Thank you. Gary. I'm so grateful that I've learned in this church that uh, God governs every, every detail of our lives and we can trust every detail of our lives to God. Um, it was about exactly two years ago that I made a major change in my business. And it started about three or four years ago. My business partner and I got the same thought that, there were, that we needed to make a change in our business. We had a good business. It was a comfortable business, but we both felt that there was something that needed to change. And so we let it be known that we were receptive to certain changes. Um, and then God answered that prayer. Uh, a large, much larger firm approached us and offered to purchase our business and have, have us go to work for them. And that seemed like a real answer to our prayer. And then shortly after that, another much larger firm approached us with the same kind of proposition. So all of a sudden, our cup overfloweth. We had two proposals from two very fine companies uh, to purchase our business and to uh, enable us to go to work for those companies. Well, in... Uh, getting help from a practitioner in this church, I was told that the only purpose in making any kind of a change like this is to promote spiritual growth. Well, that thought was very helpful to me to keep in mind that the only purpose of making any change was to promote spiritual growth and that my employer is God and this is all in his hands. Well, very soon it became clear to us that one of these proposals was clearly right for us. And we concluded negotiations and sold our business two years ago. 
And I'm happy to say that the whole experience um, was a wonderful experience for everybody involved. The business change was good for us, it was good for them. But more importantly, this church has grown tremendously in those last two years. And I can feel my own spiritual growth over the last two years because this change has enabled me to keep my office in New Jersey and not have to move it to New York. It has enabled me to continue to do the work for church that God has for me to do that is very important for me, very important to me. And I just thank God to see his plan for me unfolding in this way. I'm so grateful for Christian Science, for the help of the practitioners that I have worked with over the years, and grateful to be here with you all tonight. Thank you. Mary. Our first email tonight is from Japan. Uh, dear Clerk, I've been reading of the 1987 history of the Plainfield Church, and I am elated. I live in Japan, and I have known of Christian science since being at a Wednesday evening service at the age of eight or so in Ottawa, Canada. I inherited many books on Christian science, and I am on page 640 or so of Science and Health. For the past few years, I have had a correspondence and some material from Ann Beals at the bookmark. Yes, I would like to become a member of your church, but first be informed of any obligations and responsibilities that being a member entails. Thank you kindly, and wishing you a lovely day. You're certainly very pleased and happy to have a, a new member from Japan. And then I'll read um, from our church website bulletin board, uh, the first from Pennsylvania. I would like to offer a special thank you for the article called Making the Port by Reverend G. A. Kratzer that can be found on the Plainfield website carousel. This article offers wonderful encouragement and support to everyone who may have the opportunity to read it. And another from Pennsylvania. The music is such a blessing in this church. Before coming to Plainfield, I spent 10 years without a church that I could attend. One thing I deeply missed was the music. I find such comfort and joy in listening. Every week I am so grateful for this church activity. I have never participated where such care was put into this part of the service. I love to hear Faith sing and all those who join her, both vocally and musically. The hymn selection always adds a healing thought. I enjoy singing with the members and appreciate their willingness to be recorded every week. The organ music played by Jim and Jared is an especially wonderful part of our services. Their work is much appreciated. And thanks, Jim, for playing Hymn 66 in the postlude after a few weeks ago, the Wednesday service. That was a nice touch and very inspired. And then Costa Rica. The readings were great, the hymns also. I like the testimony by Bruce about the confiding innocent child that grabbed his hand. God's goodness is so real and present. This church is not just a group of individuals. It is the voice crying in the wilderness, and I want it to succeed and reach more and more people. And then another Pennsylvania. Thank you for this morning's wonderful service and music. I feel, feel divinely fed. What a blessing to all. And then Virginia. Yes, thank you for the inspired readings in Sunday service, June 12th. The message of protection and promise in each of the hymns and the beautiful and very moving piece, the prayer, sung by Faith and John. All truly a gift to the world. And then Georgia. So very grateful for the love that Plainfield expressed to mankind through the Sunday and Wednesday evening services, Bible study, and roundtable. Love is the Liberator magazine and the website. I know this love is felt by all mankind right now and at all times. From miscellaneous writings, 
page 277, Mrs. Eddy says, no evidence before the material senses can close my eyes to the scientific proof that God good is supreme. Though clouds are round about him, the divine justice and judgment are enthroned. Love is especially near in times of hate and never so near when one can be just amid lawless, lawlessness and rendered good for evil. That is a beautiful quote from Mrs. Eddy. And this weekend when we were getting very troubling news, um, I was led, I'm sure by God, to find a couple of things on, on YouTube that were encouraging and comforting. Uh, one was about Iran. It was someone, I believe, from Iran speaking about Iran and how, although we hear so much about the terrorists and what's going on, he said that at the same time, there has been a, a rise and an increase in people finding, as Mrs. Eddy says, Christ's Christianity. And we know that when times are so extreme and, and people are so desperate, that is when the Christ comes because their thought is open to it. Um, it gave testimonies of people who had experienced either what they call dreams or visitations where they felt the Christ presence and they, coming out of great darkness, found the Bible and Christianity and became Christians. Uh, it was very compelling testimony to this and so encouraging because why wouldn't that be? Why wouldn't that Christ present be there? It's everywhere. And you know, we've read in the Bible during our Bible studies how the Christ does come as an angel, as a dream, as a visitation, especially when the need is so dire. And then there was another a, a YouTube of a man who giving his testimony, he was a jihadist and was totally following uh, all the, the beliefs of the Quran and planning even if he had to, to give his life for Allah and uh, doing everything he could to be, be a good jihadist, I will say. And he was in prison, I forget why, but for some reason, and anyway, he was, he was teaching other prisoners there about how to become a jihadist, how to fight the, fight the holy war. And in the middle of all that, he too had a, a visitation or a, the presence of the Christ. And when he cried out as to what this was and in such deep need and yearning to know the truth, that Christ's truth spoke to him. And he, he begged for forgiveness. Um, and the Christ said, of course I forgive you. And he knew then that he had found the real God because of the God that he had worshiped, there was no forgiveness. And he just got on his knees and, and wept and his whole life experience changed. He became a Christian and again, this was such compelling t testimony. And he said, and don't take my word for it. You find God for yourself. You find this God, this God of love, unconditional love and peace and forgiveness. This is the God. This is the God that we all should worship because he is the true and the one God. So tonight, I just express so much gratitude because that is the truth of all mankind, their need for this Christ and the Christ presence there. And this is what will heal this, this sense of hatred and fighting and war, God's love present with each and every one. I'm so very grateful for this truth. I'm certainly grateful tonight for those beautiful readings on faith and also for the wonderful testimonies and music. So grateful to be here with everyone. Thank you.